Hi, I'm a developer and I need to subdivide a large piece of land into around 100 lots. Can you help me with that? Sure. It sounds like you'll need to use the subdivision process, which also requires planning and approval for roads, sewers, stormwater systems, water for fire protection, and so forth. Ouch. That sounds expensive and time-consuming. Is there a easier and cheaper way to subdivide my land? Well, boundary line adjustments cannot increase the total number of lots, so you'll have to use the subdivision process. But there's an exemption to the subdivision process if the lots you create are greater than 20 acres each. We can use the BLA process, and then the subdivision exemption process over and over until we get to your desired number of lots. Here. Let me show you. Here's your original 1000 acre parcel and it's 30 lots of about 33 acres each. Now let's use the easy BLA process to subdivide this into 29 small lots and one big lot. That leaves us the same 30 lots you started with. Now let's jump over to the subdivision exemption process and subdivide that one big lot into 35 20 acre lots. Now let's go back to the BLA process and subdivide those 35 new lots into 34 10 acre lots, plus one big lot. Now you have 63 10 acre lots, and one big lot. Oh, I get it. I just keep repeating that process until I get to my desired 100 lots. Genius. Exactly. And you also avoid the entire approval and public review process normally associated with subdivisions. Saving you a ton of money and time. That being said, I'll open the city comment or citizen comment period at 6.50, and I will call the names as best as I can read them. This is not a dialogue, there will be a discussion, you just make your presentation, and that's where we're going to go. Raja, you signed in, start to sign on our right sheet, so I'm going to give you the lead. <laughs> just remind you, it's a five minutes, confound yeah, um, earlier I checked that what was the time limit and I was told there was no time limit, so I prepared my written statement. <laughs> so I was furiously cutting down, trimming down my statement to make the time, so please like, apologize for your little over. Um, Honorable Mayor, and dear council members, and citizens of Trinket Chilan, my name is Raja Ben Gopal, and I'm a software engineer and partner of Microsoft Operation. My wife, mother, and I got this opportunity to purchase 886 acres of this private property owned by Golden Gate Ventures, known to many of the uh, Shalan and Sri Shalan people. I was told 2017 comprehensive growth plan put in place by the city of Shalan allows 1,176 STRs on the 774 acres of the tourist accommodation zone property and hundreds of them. Uh, hundreds of single family residents on the 102 acres of the residential zone property if it was being done in a clustering and bonus credit method. In our earlier conversations with a few people, we immediately came to know that this land is like a high disaster. So my wife Madhu and I they set out to do this thing called listening to for the next six months and listen to all the community leaders, like many of the community leaders. I would say hundreds of citizens of Shilan and more than dozens of like, organizations to understand like, what they really need to see up there in the field. So it became very clear that like, there has to be a balance between preserving the beautiful part of the mountain and providing the recreational facilities like trails, cycling, biking, and the uh, affordable house for the essential workers is really very important. All of these has to be like, balanced with the importance of like, making the business to be successful for the as well. So I turned up to my team and said I asked them to come up with a plan that strikes the right balance across all these needs, which they did. The plan that they came up with 
involves like, preserving more than 50% of the, uh, this private land and uh, provide uh, hiking, biking type of like, recreational facilities like, on those preserved land and like, provide some ample amount of opportunities like, to create uh, housing for the essential workers like, of the Sedan where like, many of them can't afford to live here. And at the same time, do a uh, low density or rural style 10 acre uh, type of a lodge like, on those like, 778 like, acres of the tourist accommodation land that I was talking about. This is 78 lots as opposed to 1,176 lots that was possible. So um, we feel tested this plan. We showed this to like, many people as we are talking during the, uh, uh, the listening tour. Many of them have we heard like, a overwhelmingly positive response. Some of them said like, we are stupid enough to give away that much of value. There was one organization, of course, were not happy. They wanted 100% of the beauty to be preserved. You could be here, like that. So these are the uh, feedback that we got. I went back to my team and asked them to come up with a strategy how to work this plan, this low density plan, in an economically feasible way. And again, they did. This is the plan that involves a state provision uh, feature for land development and the city allowed growth of the housing and adjustment. The combination of these things that we can create those like, 10 acre lots in a timely fashion so that we can make this project economically feasible to again strike the balance between preservation and the providing the recreation and the housing for the essential workers and again to make the business work. The first step on this process was the BLA, and I'm very thankful for the uh, staff to approve that BLA. And uh, we have not done with that, so we're going to go and follow up that with a couple more uh, such BLA process because we're not perfect in the land in the way we wanted. And we are disheartened to find like, if that step was immediately followed by that with the moratorium. It's very interesting to watch even here. The agenda itself says BLA, but there's not an agenda. The agenda was Order by not just moratorium. Many know what was the target for this BLA moratorium. It is built. So, yeah. so um, I did some self reflection and uh, I accepted that the fault is mine in not explaining this clearly to the staff so that they understand our well intended intention to develop this in a low density way. So I took this opportunity to ask one of my lawyer, who's an expert in this type of like, certificate of exemption and BLA process in the state of Washington. There are no minor, minor, or uh, major kind of rules across the many municipalities where it is used. So I asked uh, Charlie Craig to write a letter explaining the details of how this is used across the state of Washington and what is the Supreme State Supreme Court's position on this. The letter is included in your package. Why is your time is up? So wrap it up, please. Thanks again for the opportunity. The land uh, is a private land. We are committed to develop it, and we want to work in collaboration with all of you and get your support to develop this. Thank you again for your understanding, and we look forward to working with all of you on this. Thank you. We'll try this again. Is there a Charlie? No. Russ? Mr. McClellan? Hello everybody, thank you for letting me speak. And you know, I've been in real estate a long time, 30 plus years here in the valley. I grew up here and my dad used to chase horses on the view just trying to catch one. So the three kids that rode in on the horse from Manson could actually haul that horse. You know, we still may never really caught one, but it was fun trying. So I'm pretty personally invested and I have been a long time in the future of that mountain. And I think, as we all know, codes never die, there are more people do. So what ends up happening is one code after another code after another code. And the next thing you know, you wonder why there's a lookout and not something else. So sometimes when there's a, a method of operation that accomplishes the goal of what I would believe most people like, and that is not a thousand plus homes, especially a thousand plus vacation homes or more, uh, 
opportunities clearly and have really good dialogue about why the person that's applying for that BLA is doing it. Not make assumptions without communication. And I think that's kind of what happened at this moratorium, which is fine. That's why we're here now. But I think these aren't um, a process that's going to lead to devastation. Quite the opposite. The more you force in some of the codes that we currently have on the books, they're egregious. It requires massive amounts of money. To pay for massive amounts of investment requires density. Tourist accommodation zoning, is, I believe, and I might be wrong, but it's close to 93% of the tourist accommodation zoning in the city of Shalai is on that mountain. Right, wrong, or indifferent. The Growth Management Act was a big part of that, as we all know from history. I don't know, is there a way to not have a thousand plus homes on that mountain? I think that's what most of us want. So I think by remaining loyal to a moratorium, that takes an assumption or takes one legal position, and I'm definitely not a lawyer, that this is what everyone wants in the state, or everyone does. I think maybe Bellingham is an exception, not the rule. I think we should think for ourselves and think about what Charlie Kling's letter actually says regarding our state Supreme Court, and be careful what we do next if we don't want a thousand plus homes, which I thank you for the time. Thank you.